So if you're trying to build out an application that integrates with OpenAI or Claude, I, I guess you call it um, Anthropic, typically it's kind of complex to have all these different like Anthropic SDKs and the OpenAI SDKs. And to make it simpler, I would highly recommend you check out this AI package. I think Vercel kind of works on this. And this is honestly the first time I've even played around with it. it. Like this has been out for a very long time, so this isn't something new. But I did just start using this for my simple site maker project. And basically whenever you want to refine a page or refine the entire website, basically I make a call to that AI package. And inside of that package, you're able to kind of like change what model you're using. And it's all wrapped behind the same interface. So it's very convenient. And I'll kind of walk you through the code and I'll kind of show the documentation a little bit. This will be a very, very short video. So let me try to figure out where I actually import this AI package. Um, I have it in my package JSON, as you can tell, but over here, I think I import it. So let's take a peek at how this works. So in this file that I call open AI, but honestly, this should just be called like AI at this point, you'll see I import this generate object method. And using this method, if I go and find out where I'm using it, you'll see that when I'm trying to generate some structured responses. So for example, I'm going to prompt AI and say, hey, I have a page and I need you to modify it like this. And then that's going to give me back a response. And typically when you're dealing with AI systems, it's very good to have it return some type of like structured output because you want to have your code know what to do with the output, right? If it just generates you a bunch of text, you would then have to go and manually parse through it. Sometimes it throws in random curly braces and tokens. Sometimes it's very inconsistent, like you'll tell it to output JSON, and then it does nine times, but on the 10th try, it just gives you something like XML or something stupid, right? So using generate object can allow your response to be structured. And you'll see here, the way this works is you call it and you give it the model that you want. In my case, I have a function that just returns a hard-coded thing, and I have to go and manually change it. But the cool thing about this is if I wanted to have this be an option that was kind of driven by the user, like if I go back to the UI, I could potentially have a drop down here where you can change your model. Or if you wanted to go to like your project settings, I could have a model here that allows you to change what model you want to use when you're generating your UI or doing your refinements, right? And I would say using this AI package makes that type of functionality extremely easy because all I need to do here is probably just you know, pass in some type of key and based on the key, I can return either this open AI model or I can return like an anthropic model or whatever else. So these two things, these come from the AI package. You'll see here, I import them from AI SDK and they have a bunch of different packages. They have, uh, well, I only imported two, but if you actually go to their docs, I think they have a bunch. Let's go to supported providers. And here you'll see they have like uh, Grok, OpenAI, Azure, Anthropic, Amazon, Mistral, Together AI, Deep Infra. They have a ton of different providers and literally all you need to do in your code is just import them. And then down here, you just call the model and then you can actually give it a version. So like, for example, OpenAI has quite a lot of different versions, right? They have GPT-4 and all these different timestamps of when they were released. 01, they got turbo models. So you can actually make this very easy to kind of toggle which AI model you want to play around with because obviously as AI models change, some of them are good at certain tasks and some of them are not as good as different tasks. So like, let's look at Anthropic. We got Claude, 3, 4, whatever. And that's how that kind of works. So going back to the actual generate object call, you'll see that I'm passing messages. This is typically just an array that looks like this. You have some content and you have a role and you'll have max tokens, which I don't know what this needs to be set, honestly. Like, what do you set this as? Do you want it to be something high? Uh, max tokens, I guess it depends on your model. So I think this should probably change based on the model you're using. I haven't looked much into it. You guys leave a comment if you guys can suggest what my max tokens should be and if those should change based on the models I'm using. And then also you have the schema. This is the important part. If you want structured output, you typically pass it a schema object. And luckily these can all use the Zod object to kind of define what the schema looks like. So see here, I have a Zeta object. I give it a path and content. So this is where I'm defining that, hey, when the AI model returns a response, this is the response structure that it needs to have. So when I tell it to refine a page or when I tell it to refine my entire website, it returns me a path. So like which page I want to actually 
change. And then also it provides me the change content of that. And I probably shouldn't say the complete HTML content. I'll just say the content of the page or script because this can actually have various things. Um, this could be like styles.css or something. What I found is you have to be very precise when it comes to prompting because sometimes AI will take you very literal. The fact that I had the key term HTML inside of that describe block, that could completely skew how stuff is returned. So like keep in mind the prompting is very important and stuff can be very, very delicate, I guess you could say. Like you can just change a single word in a prompt and that could mess everything up. It looks like project ID isn't used. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't be refactoring for you guys. I'm trying to tell you how this all works. So anyway, that is the AI package. I highly recommend you use it. For the longest time, I just used like the open AI SDK, but in reality, I should have just used this module because it's phenomenal. It has like every provider you'd ever need, and it's very easy to just like swap stuff out. The documentation looks pretty well written and they have quite a lot of examples. Honestly, I haven't read through any of this. So you guys leave a comment if there's anything in particular you think I should read through here that's important. Um, some things that are probably important for me to learn next are like usage. I want to know how much tokens my prompts are using so that I can track those for the users and they can kind of get an estimate of how much stuff is costing me. Like anytime you're trying to run a SaaS product or build a business that's using AI, you should probably track the usage because you want to charge the right amount for your service. And if people are using a ton of AI and you are charging lower for like your monthly subscription, unless you're trying to just do a bunch of marketing and advertisement up front, then yeah, maybe maybe going into the red and being negative on your SaaS is okay. But for the most part, you should probably track how many tokens people are using, um, so you can properly set your price point for your application. None of this is live. This application is not live, so don't actually try to go and like see if this can be accessed anywhere. But yeah, go check out the AI model. Just npm install AI, and you're good to go. You probably just vibe code it into your project if you want to do some like open AI responses and stuff. But that's all I want to kind of share with you all. Just kind of uh, letting you know it exists. Don't be dumb like me. Use it now instead of trying to actually integrate directly with these uh, models. It's good stuff. All right, have a good day. Happy coding.